Okay, we're gonna start our airbrush one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, what we're gonna start first, I'm gonna teach you the difference between a single action and a double action airbrush. This one here is a single action. You just push down and, and you regulate the paint on this little lever here. See this? You rotate it back and forth. You go down with it, tighten it, and it uh, reduces the amount of paint coming out. All you do is, when you push this button is air coming out. And you regulate how much paint you want to. Will and the double action, the difference between a double action, I'm gonna grab one here, I do have another one. With a double action, you push down and that's air, and then you have to pull up back to get paint. The more you pull back, the more paint you will flow out. That's a little more difficult too. I mean, you could be, if you're not experienced and you're pulling back, all of a sudden you pull back too far, you get a lot of paint and you're, you know, you're gonna mess up your, uh, your painting. So the first color we're gonna, we're gonna experiment a little bit with the airbrush to get you familiar with how it operates and how to, how to a little exercise on how to uh, aim so you can get the right aim and shooting in the right areas when you're airbrushing. So we're gonna start with the, uh, Applying some of this uh, green, it's just uh, Woodson Water is the name of the brand of this company. I really like them. These are the thinnest uh, airbrush paints ever made. They flow to your airbrush a lot easier than any airbrush I've ever used. No, this is already airbrush ready paints. Uh, so they're ready to just to put them in your airbrush and start going at it. Okay, we're going to... We're gonna start, and I'm gonna I'm gonna demonstrate to you. Uh, you want to hold that for me right here, and I'm gonna demonstrate to you how we're um, using this airbrush. This is what you like to see: a mist coming out, just a real light mist. We're airbrushing. We're not painting. We're just airbrushing. Means uh, you're layering the paints, a mist of paint at a time, so you can get transparency. So this is kind of what you want to get: a nice even mist. Now the closer you get to the uh, object, you know, the uh, darker it will be like that. Now hold on to that a minute and you can regulate what I was talking about to you guys. Uh, you can open this and you'll get a lot more if you're trying to cover a lot of surface. Oh, yeah. You're trying to paint a car or something like that. Yeah. But you turn it back down and you can get really small, really, really small. So what I'm gonna have you do is practice on making, uh, uh, practice, let me see another plate here a minute. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna, I want you all to try to make uh, four dots like this. Make four dots like that. I'm trying to uh, show you to uh, get the same amount of paint every time you spray so that you know how to control that. So we're gonna do a four spot deal like that. And then we're gonna connect the lines. I want you to go back and then go across and try to get an even amount of paint across, down, the other way, and then up. Connect all four lines like that. Just to show you, to get the feeling of how to aim it and make sure you go across, down. You'll be using this exercise when we're painting. So I want you guys to just get a feel for that. Okay, now we're gonna clean it, clean the airbrush. We're just gonna clean it out. I want, I want to show you folks how do you uh, maintain the airbrush. What we're gonna do, you can submerge this airbrush up to this before you, before you come to the trigger up here. You can submerge it in the water and grab some water in there. Oh, yeah, with the cup. And then you want to spray into the side of the, the, side of the container in here to, to get that airbrush yeah. clean. You just spray it all out, see that? Get it all out. We're gonna yeah. empty that cup up. It. Turn it upside down and empty it like this too. You can turn the cup upside down and empty the paint. And then spray out so you see just clear water coming out. Now one of the things uh, that happens in the airbrush, even though you clean it, there'll still be some paint, uh, you know, trapped in here. So what I do is I backwash it so that it pushes the, the paint back up. And the way I do that is by tapping on the top See how this, uh, this is coming out? Bubbles, it's back washing the paint that's trapped in here and it'll clean the airbrush a little better. All right, 
Once you get it clean, let me know. Everybody takes their airbrush and clean it. There's... You're just cleaning it? Yeah, there's, uh, I can see there's dust. I was just dusting some of this stuff. I'm gonna use a pearl, pearlazin paint. This is made by Wildlife Colors. I get it from a taxidermy source in uh, Georgia. I, and you can also buy a pearl as an airbrush paint, like at Hobby Lobbies. They have some airbrush paints. You want to make sure you check your containers really good. And we're going to pearlize the whole surface of the fish that we're painting. And the reason I do that, pearl has frag fragments in it that are reflect and refract when light hits it. It just wants to really shine. Well, that's the base coat. And that's the base coat so that when we do other colors on top of that base coat, the pearl always wants to come out of the background. It makes your fish look real brilliant. So, so. We're gonna open the airbrush a little bit more than we typically did on, on the other session we did. So we're gonna go and take, uh, I'm gonna take somebody's bluegill here and show you. We're just gonna go over the whole fish. I'm gonna open this thing up. You'll see where the pearl goes to. We get it in all the fins, everywhere on the whole surface. Go in there back and forth. One of the things I do when I'm airbrushing, I'm always starting pushing on before I go into the fish. If you start right in the center of the fish, you're gonna get a spot right there and then go out. You don't wanna do that. So you gotta go out. You notice how my airbrush is going on and off. Just like you spray a car, yes, exactly. But I'm always starting on the outside and going into the fish like this. Make sure I get all the edges in the back. Don't miss the back edge, the bottom of the fish. This fin down here. Now you see the difference. See, this is pearl compared to that doll fish right yeah. there. Because it's got a pearlescent look. That's what you want to do to all the fish. Okay, we're going to go to the next step. Now we're gonna go and apply the first coat of, uh, of green. We're gonna use the XD, Wood, Woods and Waters XD Green. And uh, what we're gonna do is apply it on the upper part of the fish, upper half of the fish. We're gonna go from the face. You do not wanna hit the gills. The gills are always white or blue. That's why they call them blue gills. Uh, so that'll stay white for now. Everywhere you see scales in, in, the, in the cheek, you want to apply this green and on the face and over the eye is fine. And then we're going to go halfway across the whole fish on top of the back here. Try not to get too much on the fins. We're going to apply it up here, in here, up here, in here, in this area, halfway to the fish. And we're going to let it fall a little bit to the sides. So it's got to kind of be a uniform surface when we're done with it. And I'll, I'll demonstrate one here with this lady's fish. I'll plate and test it. Right now it's really open, really a lot, so you're going to get a lot of paint. You don't want that for this color. You're going to dial it down. Fine. Fine little mist. Okay. Okay, I got it dialed down where I'm missing. If you see, for everybody to see that much right there, okay? Real lightly. You wanna build your colors, we're airbrushing, we're not painting, so we wanna build the colors and still see a little transparent look. We're gonna go right here in the cheek. And this part of it says white because we're gonna paint that black, that's the year of the fish. So we're gonna go there like this, over the top of the head. I'm never looking at my airbrush, I'm just looking at where the paint's going. I don't even look at my airbrush, I just wanna, by feel, I can see where the paint's going. You don't want a real dark, you just want a nice, nice shade like this. Because I'll show you why when we do the next step. A nice even coat. All the way across. All righty. 
Yeah, that light. This is just a base coat for what we're going to do next. Okay? No, the gills, yeah, you don't want to get it, but we'll put some powder in there. Yep. You're all right. Okay, we're going to go to the next step. And what we're going to do next is we're going to gold tip all the scales of where the green we did. All the scales got to be tipped with the gold. And when I say tip, I meant we're just going to cover half of the, uh, the back end of the scale. We're going to do it all on the face. Uh, where, where there's scales, right here. And we're going to do everything above here and all the way to the center of the fish and above up here. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you how we're going to do this. We're going to take some airbrush paint, some gold. This is a uh, Woods and Water Pearl Gold. It's a pearl color. But airbrush paints are so thin that they're not really uh, made to hand brush. So what I do to make it thick enough for hand brushing, I add a gold powder pigment. A gold powder pigment is still acrylic. It's just another form of acrylic. But it thickens up. I take some of this, pour, pour some of this paint on there, take some of this acrylic, and mash it into there until it's Thicker. thick enough to, to uh, brush by hand. I'll go around and apply a little bit of paint for you guys and I'll apply the amount of, of powder pigment you need to make the right consistency. I have already a, a little bit of here mix, pre-mix. So I'll show you on Isa's fish here if she don't mind uh, how to gold tip this yeah. fish. You take a little bit on the tip of the brush, about that much. Just kind of don't put too much on the brush. You just want to put a little bit and then start just tipping the, the scales real lightly like this. It goes pretty fast. You can do a lot of scales. You can do 20 or 30 scales with one uh, draw of paint. See that? See that? That's what you're going to do. Just a, like a little half moon shape on the back of it. Got it. You're going to start at the top of the head. You notice the scales start about right here. That's where you want to also go around and just kind of lay it all out. And start from the front back. That way you don't yeah. get your hands on the on, uh, over here. So you want to on the paint. So just go in there and just make like a little half moon and just draw it backwards. They don't have to be totally perfect. There's a lot of other paints we're going to put on top, the bars. So a lot of it will get covered with the other uh, procedures we're doing. So it's not real critical. But the neater you, job you do, the better your bluegill will uh, turn out. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go to the next step, apply some powder pigments. We're going to use a color called uh, fine aluminum. It's like a silverish color. And we're going to apply it all on the bottom half of the fish. Not, not on the fins though, never on the fins. We're going to go all the way from the, where there's white right here is where you put your fine aluminum. On the gill plates too, all the way up to the bottom jaw right here in the breast in here. Try not to get it on the fins. And I'll, we're gonna go with this and we're gonna apply it real softly. We're gonna go like this. You don't wanna brush it. You wanna kinda tap it in like this. Go in the gill plates there where it's white. Get a little more of that. Then you go and you blow it off lightly. And this is what you want to see right there. Uh, make sure you get it thoroughly though. You don't want it blotchy. This is what you want to see, right? See that silver? Yeah, like that. So you got more than you need right Ooh, there. Man. But that's okay. When you blow it, blow it lightly so you don't blow it on anybody's face. We're going to go to the next color. 
and it's a powder pigment also. This one is called Misty Lavender. It's made by Pearl X Colors. You can find this at Hobby Lobby and other hobby shops. And this one we're gonna put, it's gonna be by the anal fin. We're gonna apply some of this in this area right here. Don't be afraid to go up a little high there, that's okay. You'll see this lavender on, on, the, on the fish. Right where you applied some uh, multi-leaf aluminum. And go up a little bit up here a little bit, that's good. I went from the fin back to the tail and all around here. Not necessarily real hard on the bottom because we're gonna put, apply another color there. All right? Chance, don't so get it on your fins, please. Uh, because uh, the fins will not look good if you have them in there. The, the next step with the powders, we're using now a powder pigment called uh, Dual Blue Green. Dual Blue Green, and it's also a Perlex uh, powder pigments. And we're gonna apply this, we're gonna apply it right, real lightly, this is a, just a little, a little amount on the base of the anal fin right in here and run it to the tail, very little you want. You just want a, you just want a light touch of it. You see it on bluegills, a real light touch right here. See that how much I put in there? Really light, and then you're gonna wanna put it, they call them bluegills, because you put it on the gill right in here, right on the gill and all the way to the mouth right here. Don't be afraid to go a little bit into the green here, just so lightly, and then you just, Blow it off and you get a little light of a uh, bluegill. Yeah. Perfect. See, That's like that. the color you I try and get. Yeah, that we're gonna go a little darker. Sometimes you see a real blue on a bluegill, sometimes you don't. What we're gonna do is we're going to go and apply some lacquer to to create a net uh, a safety net. What that means is we're gonna apply lacquer and then we're gonna come and do the bars. If we don't like the way they're turning out, we can wipe it off with denature alcohol without touching any of the previous paints we've done. Yeah, this will lock everything in in case we make any mistakes from here on. And then you're, I'm gonna hand everybody a little piece of charcoal vine. Uh, they come in a little box like this. They're charcoal sticks and they're vines, actually dark uh, gray vine. And uh, we're gonna take and hold our pattern right up to the gill like this. I'm gonna hold it with my finger like that and then start drawing my lines right on the, on the inside of that opening there. Now, you notice that by the fins, it goes over the fins. Don't do it on the fin. Stop at the top end of the fin and then continue on the bottom end of the fin. Okay, don't go over the fin. So we'll start with this and I'll, I'll hold it here in place. And I'm just gonna real lightly scratch some of this right here, like that. Just kind of going in there. We're going down. We'll do one more. We're covering the whole surface. Then do it all across and then take it off. And then you're gonna come back. This is what we have right now, I'll show you folks. See that, it's not going all the way up to the back but we need to go all the way up to the back. Yes, continue by going freehand and going up to the back of the, of, the, of the fish. Continue it all the way up. Yeah, all the way up. No, not to the bottom, just to the back. The bottom stop where the pattern starts. We're gonna take a brush and we're gonna tap it lightly to soften that a little bit. We're gonna go in there, tap it like this, go like this. Tap it to loosen it up. Never. You don't get it to really dark. Yeah, and then I'm going to go a little bit lighter on the bottom. But it goes to a point almost right here. I'm going to freehand. I think it'll look better. Now, you blow on it. And this is probably how dark you want it. You don't want it any darker than that. Actually, if you can get it a little bit fine, uh, lighter, that'd be great right there. Okay. Do the, yeah, do the white side. When I spray lacquer, they're gonna even darken more. You don't wanna see them black, you wanna see a dark gray. We're gonna do the next step on this bluegill. 
Now we got it all with the bars already on there. And we're gonna use a, uh, this color is called yellow oxide. It's an acrylic paint. Everything we're using is made by Liquitex. Yellow oxide, it's a very transparent color. That one there and, uh, and the cadmium red. We're gonna paint the breasts of the fish, the fish and that's and it's orange. Uh, so we're gonna put first the yellow oxide first. We're gonna pour a little bit of this, uh, a water, and we're gonna thin down this yellow. Okay. You put it in your brush and you take it off. You wanna dry brush this. Take most of it off and then you you just want a real light coat of this. This is as far as you need to go with it, right there. See that? Just a little bit, and then you wanna work a little bit, very, wipe it all off your fin and work it a little bit and going into the fin like this, to that fin, just a little bit so it uh, kinda fade feathers, it fade it out to the, to the fin, okay? We're gonna use the cadmium red and man, this, you're gonna just wanna take a real small amount. This can be dangerous. This is, uh, this can ruin your whole curve in here. This red, you just want very little of it. And uh, I want you to wipe it off on a rag, like this. And just apply it real lightly on there. Yeah, right into the yellow, yeah. Yeah, over on top of the yellow. Yeah, we're turning the yellow into orange. Put red wherever you put orange. The next step, now that we got the breast orange, the next step is going to be the fins. And we're gonna use a color by Galleria Windsor Newton Raw Sienna. You're gonna take it pure this time. Put a quite a bit of it, and you're gonna do the dorsal. Wipe it on like this. You want to spread it out good though, you don't want chunks. See what's going on? And then when you're almost out of, out of paint, I want you to do this one real lightly with this color. Just a real light touch, real light touch on this one. When you're almost out of paint, do the bottom ones all real lightly, real lightly like this. We want to get a little bit of a reddish, uh, flashy look to the inside of the mouth. I like using a rust, a color called rust and is made by Woods and Water. That is the best looking flash color I've found yet. You and Mike, we're, we're uh, getting it reddish on the inside. If you like that, that's fine. If you want to tone it down, you can add some white pearl. Okay, next step. We're gonna use another Pearl X uh, powder pigment, and we're gonna apply a little bit on the breast right here where we put the orange, yellow, and uh, red. Go we'll put a little bit of that, put it on the breast. Oh man, is that gonna make it brilliant? Just on the breast, okay, and then come up a little bit in here. This is, uh, uh, go ahead and uh, lacquer him again one more time to seal that, everything we just did. Okay, we're gonna get ready now to go to the next step. We're gonna use a color that's made by Poly Transpar. This is a taxidermy color, and it's called musky green. What we're actually gonna do is apply it on the back of the fish where we did all the gold tipping. And we're gonna apply it on the fins, on the top fins only, and the face a little bit. Start at the head. Put this color in there. Tie it all in together right on the top of the back where we go down a little bit into here. And yeah, when we're done the gold, and then we're gonna do the fins. The whole fin's gonna be greened out. See what we got so far? We got the top fins, we got the top of the back and the face a little bit to blend everything together. Now she's gonna do the caudal fin, which is the back fin. And stay far away from it when you're doing it and work your way in. Just, yep, there you go, like that. Get the edges real good. Over here on the bottom. Don't forget that. Don't forget the top. And then we're just gonna lightly hit this guy, just very lightly, just to give it a little color. Not much, that's about it. Make sure you adjust your airbrush to where it's toned down lightly and it's misting. 
What we're going to do is add another color to that green to darken it up. All fish are kind of dark right on the top of the back. And then we're going to hit the edges of uh, the fins just to create a little contrast. Go all around the edges. We're using a dark, dark green paint. This is a mixture I made. I made it with uh, yellow and black. It makes it look better than the bluegill, bluegill faces are kind of a little darkish. See what it did to that? It, the back, I added it on the back and on the face a little bit. As we go on the edges of the fins like this, hit the edges of the fins. The bottom ones too, real lightly though, just to give it a little contrast. See that? This is what you want. See that? I hit all the edges of the fins around the edges. It gives it a nice contrast. And you can darken the fins as dark as you want them. I want to have Don uh, lacquer this fish now at this point. Okay, we're going now. We got two more steps to go. And we're going to go back to the gold pigments, the pearl axe powder and the Createx gold pearl satin. We're going to mix those two colors or two products together. This is going in the eye. And that's why we lacquered it because if, uh, uh, if you don't like how it looks like it, you can wipe it off with denatured alcohol and start again. The eye of a fish or egg shape, the pupil of it, egg shape and the pointier part of the egg shape it goes towards the front. The way I do it to make it easier I create like a um, a pyramid shape first. I start at the front work my way back go to the other side work my way back and I and then I go turn it around and make it round on the back and you get a perfect egg shape. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Boil that sucker. <laughs> you take the hair dryer, dry that eye real good. Ebony black, just a dark acrylic color. You take and you load up your brush again. You want to stay inside the parameter of the gold and create a rim around it. You go from the front, create your little pyramid, turn your fish around. The way I do it, I push my paint to the edges. And this is what you want to see, see? This brings the fish right oh, to life. Yeah. I, I got a little rim around the, painted the egg, another egg shape inside the gold. And you paint all this black, all this is black. And this is what you want the ear to look like, right there. You're using that black? Using the same black. Once your eye is done, we'll lacquer it one more time. After you have it lacquered, you can take it home after it dries overnight. You want to go with a little uh, bit of a clear fingernail polish over the eye and do a few more coats the next couple of days and it'll give you a nice glass eye.